Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 24 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. In the previous video, I started talking about the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions in the case of phenols. And this was the first category of reactions that we were, going, we were discussing in reactions of phenols. Under this, I explained nitration of phenols to you. In this video, we are going to be talking about the second type of electrophilic aromatic substitution that is there in your syllabus, which is halogenation. So let us start. Just a little recapitulation. As in the case of nitration, we know that we used nitric acid to carry out the nitration of phenol. If we used dilute nitric acid, we would get only one substitution. And since the phenolic group is orthoparadirecting, which I explained in the previous video, why is it orthoparadirecting? The substitution that would occur would either occur at the ortho position, which is the second position after or the neighboring position next to the OH group, the neighboring carbon in the ring, or it would be a para substitution, which is the opposite end, that is the fourth carbon. So you would get a mixture of ortho or para isomers in the case of nitration, nitro compounds also. And if we used concentrated nitric acid, we got picric acid, where the ortho and para positions would all get substituted together because of a lot of nitration that was occurring uh, due to the concentrated nitric acid. And then I told you that when we carried this reaction in the presence of just nitric acid, we get a mixture of ortho, para and picric acid, which is not in a very high yield. That is, you do not get enough picric acid. But if your intention is to get only picric acid, then you would use sulfuric acid. And then I explained a little bit what is the role of sulfuric acid in the reaction too. So this is just remembering what we did in the previous video. If you do not recall what I'm speaking, I would encourage you to watch the previous video too. And then let us move to this because this in this I will not be explaining each and every step. We'll be moving faster. So when halogenation, what is what are halogens? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine are the halogens. When halogenation, halogenation of phenol takes place, again, depending on the conditions of the reaction, you may get a mono substitute, that is a single uh, halogen atom would get added or you will have multiple depending on the conditions, just like nitration. So in halogenation, it is said that on treating phenol with bromine, we are taking only bromination in this case. So when on treating phenol with bromine, different products are formed under different conditions. The first is when the first condition, when the reaction takes place in solvents of low polarity. When the polarity is low, the conditions are milder. Just as in the case of nitration, we used dilute nitric acid. In the same way, here we carry out the reaction in the presence of Lewis acids, which kind of make it a, uh, sorry, solvents of low polarity, for example, chloroform or carbon disulfide. At low temperature, you get monobromophenols. That is only when the conditions are milder, you will get only a single uh, halogen atom attaching itself to the phenol molecule. So again, reaction, when the reaction takes place in solvents of low polarity and examples of these are CHCl3 that is chloroform or CS2 carbon disulfide and at low temperature conditions are milder, monobromophenols are formed. And we know that the phenolic group is ortho and para directing. Again, just to recapitulate. Oxygen has lone pairs of electrons which kind of come and form a double bond here between oxygen and the carbon which as a result pushes the double bond, the pi electrons here and the negative charge comes on the ortho position and this then forms a bond here which in turn pushes these two electrons to the para position and therefore you have density of electrons at ortho and para positions and that is why the electrophile electrophile, the species which loves the electron, which is positively charged, comes and attaches itself to the ortho and para positions. So what happens in this reaction is that bromine molecule in the presence of carbon disulfide at low temperature or in the presence of CHCl3, that is chloroform, bromine would get attached, would 
kind of ionize and it would form a, an electrophile. That is, bromine would break down to form Br positive. That forms the electropositive and that comes and joins itself either at the ortho position or at the para position. And since bromine is a heavier um, what um, atom and OH is there, the closer it is to OH, that, is, that would not be a very stable molecule because the weight is kind of becoming lopsided. But this seems more symmetrical and nature always favors symmetry. So this is and the weight is also kind of balanced. So this molecule would be more stable. That is para-bromophenol would be more stable. So you get a mixture of orthobromophenol and para-bromophenol. When you carry out the bromination of phenol in the presence of carbon disulfide and or chloroform at low temperatures, just one bromine adds on either at the ortho position or at the para position show. So we never carry out reactions with single molecules. So in the products, you'll get a mixture. You'll get a mixture of ortho bromophenol and para bromophenol out of which you will get a larger number of para bromophenol. So this is the major product. Now in chapter 10, we had studied about the halogenation of bromine. No, there is no uh, factorization of the OH present there. So OH is not, the presence of OH makes it, makes the electrons available at the ortho and para positions. But if we had simple bromine, uh, sorry, simple benzene, and we wanted to carry out the bromination of just simple uh, benzene, that is what we had done in chapter 8. So usual halogenation of benzene takes place in the presence of a Lewis acid. That had been done in the presence of a Lewis acid. And what were the Lewis acids that we used? They were examples for FeBr3, FeCl3 or AlCl3 are Lewis acids. And in the presence of these acids, what, would have, what had happened? The acids had polarized the halogen molecule and generated the electrophile. So in the case of only benzene, when we carried out the halogenation of benzene, we used FeBr3, FeCl3 or AlCl3 as the uh, kind of catalysts that would help to ionize the halogen molecule. So what, ha what actually happens, for example, if you have chlorine and it reacts with AlCl3, it results in the formation of chloronium ion that is Cl positive and AlCl4 negative. The AlCl4 negative will get discharged in the later steps. As you know, electrophilic substitution takes place in three steps. That is generation of an electrophile and then the addition of the electrophile to the ring and, the, and formation of a carbocation. And the next step is release of a, a hydrogen atom or a proton, rather positively charged hydrogen atom that is proton. So that proton would kind of discharge this again, the AlCl4 that is formed. But in the first step that is generation of electrophile, Cl positive, the electrophile is generated which is positively charged. That was the role of FeBr3, FeCl3 and AlCl3 that they will help ionize a neutral molecule. See, both the chlorines are equal, but the presence of, an, of a Lewis acid polarizes it and turns it into um, one of the chlorines turns positive and the other becomes negative. Or one of the chlorines takes both the electrons and moves away and joins the acid while the other chlorine that is left behind without its electron becomes positively charged. And this becomes the electrophile. In the same way, since we are talking about bromination, you have bromine molecule and if you have FeBr3 and what would happen? The same thing would happen that in the presence of FeBr3, the bromine molecule would break into Br positive and Br negative. The Br negative would go and join FeBr3 and form FeBr4 which becomes a complex ion which is negatively charged and the Br positive which is the bromine cation that becomes the electrophile. Right? So why are we remembering this? We are remembering this th is because in the case of only benzene, we had to use Lewis acid to carry out this reaction. The chlorine or the bromine, the halogens would not form the electrophile without the help of something. So that help we obtained from the Lewis acid. 
But in the case of phenol, we did not have to do that. We did not need a Lewis acid. In very mild conditions like chloroform or carbon disulfide, solvents of low polarity, also this reaction took place. So what caused the ionization of the halogen? What caused the halogen to break down and form Br positive and Br negative? The OH present here itself because of its orthopara directing nature and the number of electrons on oxygen and making electrons available to the ring at the ortho and para positions, that itself is enough to polarize the bromine molecule. The presence of electrons and if the bromine molecule is close to it, automatically the bromine which is closer to the negatively charged any point, whether ortho or para position, would become positively charged and the other one would become negative. It will start pushing its electrons away, that will go away and this bromine which is now positively charged will attach itself at that point. Right? So in this way and then with the release of the proton in the third step, the neutral, the molecule would ultimately become neutral and you would get ortho or para bromo phenols. So this was about uh, milder conditions. But what happens if we have stronger conditions? But before that, let us read this. In case of phenol, the polarization of the bromine molecules takes place even in the absence of Lewis acid. This is due to the highly activating effect of the OH group. Activating, how is it activating? I told you by providing electrons, making electrons available at the ortho and para positions. So, if it is so easy to carry out the bromination of phenol, then if we use stronger conditions, obviously, there would be more substitution, just like we had picric acid where three nitro groups were attached. A similar situation arises where when phenol is treated with bromine water, you have enough of bromine, you get 2,4,6 tribromophenol. That is, all the ortho and para positions are filled up with bromine. So, and this 246 tribromophenol is obtained as a white precipitate. So you get a white precipitate of 246 tribromophenol. So you have phenol here plus three bromine molecules because it is you are using bromine water, there's enough of bromine. So all three of them would break down, give you the three bromines will attach themselves, and the three other uh, bromines would, of course, in the if you go into the mechanism of the reaction, you would uh, be able to tell where they move. But this is you will get a tri substituted phenol. That is 246 tribromophenol. Tri substituted phenol. Actually, the benzene ring is substituted at four positions, if you see here. One is the OH and three bromo groups attached to it. So, this was uh, halogenation. In the next video, I'll make a short video of the solved example 11.5, and after that, we'll do the second category of reactions that is Cope's reaction. So with this, I'll uh, finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a, th give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends. I, it would be great joy to me if my videos are of any help to you. And uh, come back for more videos in chemistry. And I have uh, playlists of different chapters on my channel. So please visit the channel. And chapter wise, I have put in as many playlists as I have done till now, you can watch them. It doesn't matter whether, uh, you know, uh, someone keeps doing them currently, the syllabus is the same. So whether I have done it now or in the previous year, the content is the same, the explanation is the same. It doesn't matter whether the video is old or new, you will get your content. And if it clarifies your concept, it'll give me great job. So thank you for watching and bye bye for now.